By the way, our exploration of space could soon be getting an unexpected boost. The Trump administration has announced plans to build a nuclear reactor on the moon. This you is a rendering. I still can't <laughs> believe it. This is a rendering of what it might look like. Uh, but already, I'm nervous because why is Mars <laughs> right off the? <laughs> we uh, okay. So uh, a moon-based reactor would help astronauts on long-term missions. The White House is pushing for more human space flights, and the plan is to have that reactor ready to launch by 2030. A directive from NASA's acting administrator, Sean Duffy, said one reason is to strengthen U.S. national security. Duffy said the first country to have a reactor on the moon could, quote, declare a keep-out zone. Huh. Here is what he said about the importance of this mission yesterday. If we're going to be able to sustain life on the moon to then go to Mars, this technology is critically important. Um, and I would just note that we, we're, we're behind, right? If, if, we're, if we're going to engage... Um, in the race to the moon, in the race to Mars, we have to get our act together. We have, to, we have to marshal all of our resources, all of our focus on going to the moon, which is what we're going to do. Um, and again, all right, but turning these plans into reality might not be so easy given the administration's proposed cuts to NASA. They include a nearly 50% cut in science missions and a 20% reduction in staff. On top of that, the building of the reactor seems to be dependent on NASA's Artemis mission, which was set back uh, which was set to put humans back on the moon in 2024. Well, that's been delayed until 2027. So here to discuss all of this is astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. He is the author of the upcoming book, Just Visiting This Planet, revised and updated for the 21st century. Good to see you as always. Hello. Yeah, Hello. thanks for having me back. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, By I the way, that teasing. image that showed Mars right there, what? that's a little spooky. Yeah, I mean, it's like... I think they just want to get it on your sights. Exactly. Right out the gate, we're like <laughs> not giving that, a lot of Mars confidence. Mars is way too close in that image. <laughs> so how would... Um, a reactor like this in outer space even work? It's a small reactor. I mean, the, the word nuke spooks everybody, but this reactor could sustain 50 hair dryers. Oh. That's about it, 100 kilowatts. Okay, see, yeah, what so, I'm thinking is... Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So don't get too spooked out about it, okay. A. B, if we have plans to set up a colony anywhere, you'd want an energy source. So that's not a weird fact. Okay. What makes this announcement a little different is that this plan, which would have possibly extended well into the 2030s, he wants to push it into the 2020s. And why? Because there are musings in China that, and Russia that they want to do the same. Mm -hmm. And for the past 65 years, we've been highly reactive to that kind of real or perceived threat by other, other nations, especially, of course, in the Apollo era the Soviet Union. So this is, this is on brand for America right. to do this. What's not on brand is to cut science programs, not only in NASA, but across the board, and then say, we want to excel in this one spot. Well, in the 1960s, science was a major investment profile of the United States. And by the way, it's not on brand even for Republicans, because Republican administrations since the Second World War have had a higher annual increase, average annual increase in the science budget than even the Democrats. So Trump's decision to cut science is not on brand for even being a Republican. And to say, let's cherry pick where we want to show the world where we're the best, you can't really do that without the rest of a science foundation. I mean, you, you raise a good point, uh, because in the 1950s and the 1960s, when the United States realized that they were a step behind the Soviets in the race to space, is when all of a sudden there was an increased focus on science, technology, and importantly, in schools. Yes, science. Thank you. I meant to say that. So it wasn't just government programs. It was There was a general deep interest that went into the schools, into teachers, uh, and, and people's attitudes towards science was completely different. And, and so if you want to lead the world, you can't cherry pick a thing and believe that that's going to work because science is highly cross-pollinating. I mean, just take a look at the iPhone example. Steve Jobs didn't invent GPS or, 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 or solid state storage or touch screen. He didn't invent any of it. Put it together. This is the cross-pollination right. of different engineering and science so, frontiers. Neil, I mean, even when Vlad was reading this intro, like, it sounds like science fiction, but is this just, like, manifest destiny? Like, are, is it inevitable that we're going to have to go to the moon and try to colonize the moon? Like, 
Well, consider that we could have stayed there in 1972, but we didn't. Could have gone back in 1980, 1990, 2000, 2010, but we didn't. All of a sudden, we have the Artemis program. We're going back to the moon. Why? China says they're going back to the moon. Once again, we're being reactive. I don't have a problem with that. I just want people to be honest about the motives. So when he says- Isn't there a reality where like, we're, this planet is not gonna be able to, to sustain us for the long term and we're gonna have to find elsewhere? Well, okay, it, by, by sane estimates, it looks like our population will level off at about 10 billion. And, but if we wanna keep growing a population or if we wanna live forever, all right, we're gonna need an, we're gonna need another planet. So, so is that the moon? Because a I don't want to live it, on the moon. Right? Is it a, <laughs> is, is it will it serve as a functional life source eventually for human beings? And b we know how the age of colonialism worked on this planet. Should we be trying to colonize and saying that there's a keep out zone that not other countries can participate in? Well, having, the, the real problem yeah. with the colonization history in Western civilization is that there were people already there, right? right? There are no moon beings that were displacing. As far as we know. know. <laughs> as far as we know. <laughs> or, or, or Martians. Yeah. I'm just saying the, the moon and Mars, yes, they, they would be the next place you might put people, but it, I don't see it as a, it makes a good headline and clickbait, but I don't see it as a realistic way to deal with our overpopulation mm. or overconsumption. So of is there resources. a need to put this reactor on the moon, or are we just trying to win a race? No, there's a little bit of muscle flexing there, and the, yes. If there's say, a practical need besides if you're the, gonna the set up, If you're going to pitch tent and have a colony there, you're going you're gonna to need an energy source. But if you have an energy source that's there long before anybody else gets there, then that was that was that was a muscle flexing. Yeah. And by the way, on the moon, there's a there's an old joke about the moon. If we colonize it and set up a restaurant. It would have very different food there, because, but it would have no atmosphere. Ah, <laughs> Anthony. Uh, love a space joke. Yes, Tyson. It's a dad joke. I it's love a dad it. Joke. No, we love bad jokes here. Oh, we do. I'm I didn't say bad delivery. joke. I said, said dad, dad joke. joke. Oh. <laughs> Dad joke. Wah, it was wah. a great See, that's what I do on this show. <laughs> I do that. Foot in mouth out. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, always great to have you, my friend. Thank you very much. That was today's By the Way.